Oh, I got a good one. I got a good one. How did I forget this? We went to extremes. Will I still randomly call them out to see if they're listening? Yeah. Math, math, math. Whoops. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor. I teach third grade in Central California. And today I have an awesome teacher tag. It's all about how I was that kid in school. Pretty much this idea came to me because I was just observing some of the kiddos in my class. Even the ones that I'm just like, oh my God, why? And it's like, oh, wait, that was me. Like I, I was that kid too. So I figured I'd reach out to some other awesome teacher tubers and ask them to join me. So we have an amazing group of teachers in this playlist, guys. Please check out all these teachers in the playlist videos. I'm sure they're going to be amazing. Comment below, tell me which one was you. All right, let's get started. Question number one is which kid were you? And it could be multiple of them. So. Throughout the different phases of my academic career, I was definitely that student, but in different ways. So let's go way back and start elementary. In kindergarten, yeah, I'm going there. I was definitely that kid that was there for the boys. Re oh my gosh, okay, so recently, I actually talked to my friend's mom who said when she dropped her daughter off to kindergarten, she was very upset, but I came over to the rescue and just said, hey, it's okay, let's go chase boys. And I'm sure she felt a lot better leaving her daughter with me after that. But just super lighthearted, like I was in kindergarten, come on. But it was just more about the social aspect for me. And that is one thing, I was definitely that kid who did not really care about the academics says the teacher, but I was more so interested in like the social construct of it all. That is definitely a common theme throughout this video, just so you know, but it started off with just wanted chase boys. <laughs> so I think this is first grade, maybe second, not sure. Um, this is my friend Katie. I just had lunch with her like last week. And then this was my little friend, my best friend who I swore I was going to marry in kindergarten. So there was my first boy crazy little crush, little Zorro. But I definitely see this in my first graders when I taught first grade, my third graders, I see it. And especially around springtime, oh my goodness, around springtime, the kids get all flirty. You see them start like, <laughs> and now as a teacher, I'm like, guys, let's get it together. You're eight. And in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make you partners with this boy. Please focus on your assignment and don't just steal his pencil the whole time. And then I'm like, well, I can't be mad because that was me. <laughs> And now as a teacher, I feel like the best thing to do is like, instead of wasting all your energy, trying to split up everyone and make sure that they're not talking and flirting and doing whatever, just let it be to an extent. You know, like if, if she's gonna keep looking at the cute boy trying to flirt with him anyway and not paying attention to her partner, just partner them up. She'll figure it out. She might pay more attention. Cause I'm pretty sure that's what worked for me. So give it a shot. In junior high, high school, might be a different ball game. This is definitely for the elementary league. Yeah, okay. Oh, I got a good one. I got a good one. How did I forget this? Okay, in junior high, I was that kid who it didn't matter where you put me and my best friend, we were gonna talk. Okay, so me and my best friend, we grew up together since like kindergarten. The school made this problem once in sixth grade. They put us in all the same classes. It was the best year ever, but the teachers, I'm sorry. We went to extremes. We made a secret code. I apologize, Miss Seely, Miss Edgman, any other teachers we had. We were a lot. It did not matter. It really didn't matter how far. We had one teacher try to put us literally on opposite sides of the room. There was one time, I'm not gonna lie, it was impressive. If I was even the teacher, I'd be like, I'll give it to you. <sighs> teacher separated us on opposite sides of the classroom and we're still trying to talk to each other because she still made us face each other. Do you think that makes a difference? We're like lip, we're talking to each other. And the teacher saw and like had enough. And it's just like, really? Is there something that you guys would like to share with the class? And we're like, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. She's like, no, obviously it's so important. Share. And so, okay. Dom gets up, she makes us stand up and Dom goes, do you remember that one time? I was like, at that one place, she's like, with that one thing? And I was like, yeah. And we totally, like, we knew exactly what each other were talking about. Did it make sense to anyone else? No, it did not. And our teacher was just like, I don't know what that was, but are we, are you done? And we're like, yeah, yeah, that was it, that was fine. 
something. And then we pay attention the rest of the time. I don't know why it was so important or why we thought that, but we were in sixth grade, so it was the world. We even had a notebook. It was past the passing notes phase. We had a full on book that we passed to each other. Whenever seventh grade came in, we didn't have the same classes anymore. That book got confiscated once and read aloud to the class and we realized, <laughs> obviously we don't need to do this again. Let's make a code so they can't read it out loud. Real nice. So we did, we created a code. So that way, if a teacher confiscated a book and tried to read it out loud, she would not be able to read it. I know. As a teacher, I'm like, gosh, you guys are annoying. But at the same time, if one of my kids did that, I would equally be impressed. Like you took the time to make something specific so this could all, I give you props, man. That's the creativity and passion I'm trying to teach. Do I feel bad? A little bit. Do I expect to have karma and totally have those students in my class? You bet. But really as a teacher, what are you gonna do? Because it's going to be much more of an everyday battle to keep them separated, keep them from talking, all this stuff, probably making them want to do it more because that's how kids and humans are. And now the day has come where I have those kids in my class, not yet writing notes, but obnoxiously talking in class, even though I'm teaching and me telling them to stop doesn't help, you know? But here's the crazy thing. So me and my friend, we both, we got good grades. We were smart kids. We were listening, just not all the time. And these two boys in my class that I have, same way, two very smart kids. I know they're paying, they're paying attention majority of the time. It's just when there's that thing that is more important than whatever I got going on, they're gonna make sure they have that conversation. They're gonna make sure it happens. And I have tried splitting them up across the room and I remembered this doesn't end well. So I had a talk with them. I sat them down and I said, listen, I know you guys are best buds. I know you're going to talk. I was that kid, but we need to be a team here. Love for the conversations to happen. Have your, do your thing. Just not when I'm up in class giving the instruction, okay? My goal is to make these quick mini lessons, but you know what's gonna make them a lot longer? If you're talking to your friend. And they said, okay. And then I threw in the, but if you guys can't get it together this week, I will talk to your parents. And then it was like, okay, we're a team. Next version of that kid. I had teachers tell my parents like, well, she's here, but she's not here, you know? School was not about academics for me. It just wasn't. It was more so about the social construct of everything and learning about people. As far as like social studies, the worst, no offense. And like grammar, like I just was not, I, I can write you a good essay, but no, it just wasn't that important to me. But people and figuring out how people work. Oh yeah, I'm in and I'm still that way. But so in school, my teachers could see this sort of, but didn't quite understand. They just thought like, oh, she doesn't care. But then they would say that they would call on me in class and I would know the answer, I'd get it. Like, even though I looked like I wasn't paying attention, I was, like something was going on, but I just couldn't like focus on like, I'm just looking at you, listening at you, like, no. And I don't know why, I think it's just bored, you know? And so I have to remember that. Seeing my kids, like just because you're not making eye contact doesn't mean you're not listening to me. You know, you just need more stimulation. Not all of them, but some of them. So I have to remember that with my students, that just because they're not making eye contact, they might still be listening. Will I still randomly call them out to see if they're listening? Yeah, but I will not assume things right away. So advice to teachers, do not assume that they're not paying attention to you and they're like messing around. Some might, very well, could be. But don't be so quick to judge. Just because they're doodling doesn't mean they're not paying attention. That sometimes helps their brain comprehend what's going on. It just gives them that little extra something to do. At the tapping of the pencil, it's annoying, but same thing. Twirling the hair, that's definitely something for all the girls. That was not a graceful hair twirl. There we go. So don't be so quick to judge just because they're not all up and you're making eye contact like we would love, but it doesn't mean they're not paying attention. And here is photographic proof of me being there, but not there. Just being a little pilgrim, stoked on life. Next version of that kid, I'm gonna start with the story that happened last week. We're learning about Martin Luther King Jr. all week. That's pretty much like all we talked about. And one of our like program leaders comes into our class and is like teaching us a new concept. And so he's like, oh, I heard you've been learning about Martin Luther King Jr. Tell me about him. What are some things you learned? What did he fight for? That sort of thing. And, and one of my students, bless her heart, this was me. 
hand is up, she is ready to go, she is confident. And I'm like, heck yeah, girl. So he calls on her and she said, Martin Luther King was fighting so everyone could have the same sinks. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. And I'm trying so hard not to laugh. And even the other teacher's like, did, were they just fighting for sinks? And she's like, well, you know, toilets too, but yeah, bathrooms. He's like, oh. Okay, <laughs> but it was so cute because it's like, she's not wrong, but she's not right, you know? And I was totally that kid. Paying attention, I'm in it, I'm excited. I think I know it, and I know a piece of it, but that's not the main piece. Like, I'm not wrong, but I'm definitely not right either. But then it also escalated to like taking notes in high school and like college. Oh, I was a pro at taking notes on all the wrong things. Like my brain is like, oh, this is important. This, this is definitely on the test. No, no, it was not. Like it was like that small piece of information. I was right, but it was definitely not the important part, the, the fully right answer, you know? I had to teach my brain, hey, what do you think is important? Don't study that, it's the other stuff. And then I did better. So I sympathize with those kids, you know? They're getting a piece of the information and it's really important to them. For some reason, it sticks in our little brains. And you gotta give them credit for caring so much about that. The fact that she was so confident in raising her hand, I like that. I like the confidence behind it. I like that you went for it. That, that's important. And she is not the only one that is that kid, especially first grade the cutest little things, so stinking cute. But yeah, and you have to learn to kind of expect that and roll with it. Cause they could have easily been back there just not paying attention at all. But instead they paid attention to get that little thing. And eventually it'll grow, sorry. And eventually it'll grow. Maybe next year she'll realize it's not all about sinks. Maybe she'll realize it was about schools too. Definitely take the time to recognize the little things that your kids get, even if it's not fully correct or the full story. <laughs> because one of the most important things in school is engaging. You want them to participate. And our little kids, man, if we were to call them out on that, that might be what changes them into never participating in class. Because now fast forwarding, the next phase I went through that was that kid was too afraid to participate and speak because I would most likely say something dumb. because I couldn't trust if I was focusing on the right thing because I always tend to focus on the wrong thing, you know, the, the minor thing and me thinking it's major. I know I probably gotten called out at some point in school where I just felt dumb, so I just wasn't going to participate. And this was a big thing for me, so I see this a lot in some of my other kids. And I have to remind myself, this was you, it takes time. The main example that I have is with math. My goodness, my brain does not do math. If you ask me a basic math question, my brain just goes math, 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 and it, nothing else. That, that's it. And then nothing will come of it. So I have a student in my class and I, I, I see it. I relate. I get it. And so now we're at the point to where I will call on her a, about once a day, like in math, but I will walk her through because I see the math, 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 math going on in her head. And so I'm like, all right, you know, I'll give her the warning like, hey, I'm gonna call on you for the next one. Or I'll make that eye contact and be like, you good? And even if she's not, she knows I will help walk her through it. We will go step by step. I don't mind because I want you to get it. And if you're sitting there knowing how much you hate math and you don't wanna pay attention because you hate math, guess what? You're not going to know math. And third grade is such a prime time that I would much rather include her and make her feel comfortable in responding in math that way eventually she gets to the point to where it's more comfortable for her. But then there's other subjects like history when we just did Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, she just like flew. She was getting it, she loved it. I'm like, girl, history is your thing. So I made sure to call on her. When she raised her hand, I was like, yep, go for it, girl, tell him. And she just laid it out there beautifully. Note to teachers, kids have their thing. Kids have their subject that they just fly in but that doesn't mean you ignore the other ones that they have trouble in. We're trying to support them, lift them up. Just because they're nervous doesn't mean we can never call on them. To where I've had a conversation with a kid before, being like, listen, I know that we're very nervous to participate in class. I get it, I was that kid. So let's make a deal. 
I want you to participate. So whenever you do know the answer or you feel confident in it, raise your hand. I will call on you. If you're not raising your hand, I know you don't know it. I won't call on you, okay? That's the first step. Getting them kind of comfortable with that. Next step. Okay, I'm gonna start calling on you for things that you might not know. And that's okay, because we're gonna work through it together. Don't worry, I will not just leave you hanging. I will help walk you through it. And then they're like, oh, okay. And so then there's a trust thing there. They know I'm not just calling on them to call them out. They know I'm doing this because I care. I want us to work towards being able to raise our hand more and participate, and then they're golden. So it's not like they get out of participating. Like, oh, well, you just sat there with a the blank stare for three seconds, so I'm gonna go to the next person, because that doesn't help. You're more nervous from doing that, because then you just feel like, wow, everyone was staring at me with my blank mind for three seconds, and they probably think I'm dumb. It is just a circle that goes back to that negative feeling. So we have to guide them out of it, that way at the end they can be like, hey, I, an I answered that right, you know? Even if we had to kind of food and speed them a little bit or help them on the walk to get there, but they answered it. If there's a relationship there, they know you are not calling them out to be mean. And that's the most important part. If you're calling kids out to be vicious, oh, they are gonna know and they are gonna hate you and they are gonna not come to school. So don't be that person, okay? And as a teacher, it is so important that we understand that kid because every student in our class is some version of that kid. And it is our job to try our best to understand them and find a way to work with them and get them to enjoy school and wanna be here. At the very least, make them not hate it. And all of that starts with a relationship. So I hope that these videos give you an insight into that kid in your class to better understand them, maybe give you a couple ideas on how to work with them, maybe pull them aside, any of that build that relationship first. All right, so there's a couple versions of how I was that kid in school. If you wanna make a video and join this playlist, please look at the description down below. I will post all the questions or key points I was talking about. And you can make a video too, to give us a little more insight into your life, but to help us understand that student. So if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.